Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jason and thanks for watching. Now this weekend I was really excited to test out some new solar panels, but we had a huge cloud of wildfire smoke come in from California, so the sun just isn't really shining right now. So we're gonna put off that video a little bit longer. We're gonna jump into this power station showdown. So these are three of my lithium iron phosphate batteries. This is the Blue Eddy EB70. We have the Blue Eddy EB55 and we have the Bybean portable power station budget model. Hopefully after this video, you guys will be able to compare all the information for these three and know which power station works best for you. Let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about build materials, the chemistry inside, and the weight of each of these batteries. Now, the EB70 is the biggest battery here. It's mostly built of plastic. It has two halves that are glued together and it's not serviceable. You can't take this apart and get to anything inside unless you absolutely cut it open with the saw. This has lithium iron phosphate cells inside and it comes in at 21 pounds. The next battery that we're going to talk about is the EB55. It has very similar design to this. It's a plastic construction, two halves glued together. It has lithium iron phosphate inside as well, and it comes in at 16.2 pounds. Now the Bybeam portable power station is the most compact out of all three of them. It has this extruded aluminum, so it kind of acts like a heat sink. Um, it's really durable. I like the feel of this battery. It has the handle on top and uh, it's two plastic caps together. This one's also lithium iron phosphate chemistry and it comes in at 16.6 pounds. So comparing all three of these together, they're all built really well. I wouldn't say either of them you know, have any major issues with build quality. The thing that stands out the most about this design here is it has the ability to stack something on top of it or fit under a flat surface and it has these folding handles. This one right here doesn't have the folding handle, it has the handle on top, so it's kind of hard to stack something on top of this one. So that's kind of just the overview for each one of these. So let's go ahead and talk about pricing for each of these batteries. Price comes in at a pretty high priority when purchasing a battery, and this, this price includes tax or shipping, and so let's go ahead and just dive right into it. This one's the most expensive battery. This one comes in at $589 out the door. Now the EB55 is the next most expensive. This one comes in at $482 out the door. And the Bybean is the most budget out of all three of them. It comes in at $397 out the door. Now you guys know I've tested all three of these very extensively. I have a review video on all three of them. If you're interested in learning more about that, check that out later in the video. But during those review videos, I was able to determine the DC output capacity. So let's take the capacity of each of these and compare it to the price and we'll get a price per watt hour. Now you have to remember there's a rated capacity which is kind of advertised and then there's the actual capacity. So the EB70 comes in at 616 watt hours. Now the EB55 comes in at 478 watt hours and the Bybean comes in at 561 watt hours. So now that we know the price and the capacity, let's go ahead and do some calculation and determine the price per watt hour. So the EB70 comes in at $589 divided by 616 gives us 95 cents per watt hour on the EB70. The EB55 comes in at $482 divided by 478 watt hours. That gives us right about a dollar per watt hour. And then the last one is the Bybean. It comes in at $397 with a capacity of 561 watt hours. And that gives you 70 cents per watt hour. So 95, a dollar and 70 cents. So you definitely get the most capacity for the dollar by purchasing the Bybean. But also you have to remember, this is a smaller brand company. I don't think they actually have a contact number or you know anything like that. You buy this and you're limited to the Amazon return window if there's any issues. And going with more of an expensive model, you have the brand name and you have the warranty included. So if you're willing to risk you know, a little bit by going with a cheaper battery, I haven't had any issues with mine and I've had really good reports of this battery, but I can't guarantee how long this will last. But just so you know, the prices are kind of relative to the brand name, things like that. Okay, so we're about halfway through the video. It's a lot of information, but it's super helpful to be, so you guys can make a good decision. Now, maybe pause the video, take a minute to do some good stretching and exercises, and then we'll come back and jump right back into the information. Okay, did you guys pause it? Okay, well, let's just go on. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is charging for each of these batteries. So. 
Um, each of these can charge with an AC wall adapter. They can charge with solar panels and they can charge with DC to DC charging like in your vehicle. So let's talk about the charging limits for each battery because there's actually pretty big differences between each one. So the EB70 can charge with 200 watts using the AC adapter. It can charge with 160 watts um, using the solar panels or it can charge at about 96 watts using DC to DC charging in your car. So 200 watts, 60 watts, and 96 watts. Now the Bybean um, can charge at 100 watts max, but you're gonna see around uh, you know 80 to 85 watts on all three inputs. So solar panels, the included AC adapter, and uh, DC to DC charging. You're gonna see around 80 to 85 watts. I did see 94 watts max, but it kind of depends on where the variation is on you know, where the battery's sitting. Now the EB55 is pretty special because it has dual input charging. So you can charge at a max of 400 watts. Now that's not super real world uh, you know, conditions. Uh, you'll probably see around 350 watts if you maxed out solar and the AC adapter at the same time. But so let's just talk about that really quick. The AC adapter will charge at 210 watts on this. It, solar is also capped at 160 watts and AC to DC charging is 96 watts. So let's briefly talk about if you can charge these batteries up at the same time as powering them. Um, that is possible on all three. That means you could have a fridge running off it and have a solar panel charging the battery. You could be running a USB fan and charging the battery, or you could be running a coffee maker and charging it up with the AC adapter. They all support charging and output power at the same time. Next thing is the AC inverters. Now, it's really important to have an inverter that's pure sine wave. All these have pure sine wave inverters, and they all meet their rated capacities. So this has a 700 watt continuous 1400 watt surge inverter in it. This one has the same exact inverter, so 700 watt, 1400 watt surge. And this one has a 500 watt, 1000 watt surge. So they're all very decent inverters. I did test the RMS voltage. They all had good voltages, never had any major you know, voltage sag, and they were all pure sine wave. Now let's go ahead and talk about the power outputs because if you wanna purchase any of these batteries, you're gonna to wanna to know what type of power outputs each one supports. And so let's just talk about uh, the EB70 really quick. So um, it does have the 12 volt socket. It has USB ports. It has USB-C ports, power delivery, 200 watt power delivery ports. Now the 12 volt socket is regulated on all three of these. And I'll explain that a little bit later. Four AC outputs and uh, you have wireless charging on the top. So if you want the most type of power outputs, you're gonna to wanna to go with the EB70. The EB55 is just a little bit less by like it has one less power delivery, uh, 100 watt USB-C port, this only has one. It has more USB-A ports, and this one also has regulated voltage. Um, so the 12 volt output is 13.3 uh, volts on this one. It's 13.3 uh, volts on this one. So let's talk about the Bybean. This one has the 12 volt socket, has two 5521s, has two AC, um, plugs. It has the uh, USB-C 60 watt power delivery and some USB-A ports. Now the output on this one isn't um, regulated so you have to understand uh, the battery voltage in this is a lithium iron phosphate four cell battery. So the voltage is above 13.3 volts when it's fully charged and it goes down you know right around 12 volts so you're never going to drop below 12 volts on this battery. So you can consider it regulated, but it's just the live output from the cells inside. Now these two, they're, they're wired more in series. So these are actually like 22 volt batteries, these two. So they have to regulate down the voltage. So you actually have 13.3 uh, volts on the output on both of these batteries. So all of them will run you know, 12 volt devices without any problems. Now, one of the biggest uh, complaints that I had about the EB70 and the EB55 were the displays. If we go ahead and we'll power it on, the display on this one just shows input and output wattages and it has a battery indicator. That's the same on this one. So if we turn that on, you'll see input output and a battery indicator. That's not enough information in my opinion. You get used to it and you'll learn you know, what the battery's at by just looking at that icon. But a battery like the Bybean has a little bit more. If I turn this on, you have to hold it down for a couple seconds. Okay, so this one has the battery indicator plus an actual percentage. It has an estimated runtime at the load that your battery is running, and it has the input output 
um, wattages as it alternates. So this display will show you a little bit more. So those are the displays. If you're looking for something that maybe shows more on the screen, the Bybean is going to do that. So let's go and talk about the LED lights because this is important. If you're going to use this LED light, um, you got to know which one's good and which one's not. So the EB70, you're just going to have to get used to this. It's got this spotlight um, in party mode. Can't forget party mode. Um, but yeah, so this has a spotlight on it. This one has the, uh, it kind of, it's cool. It kind of turns on or it uh, kind of ramps up and then it has low high and then a higher mode. And then this also has, oh, I thought this had party mode, but I guess not. And then you have your EB55, which has low, medium and party mode. So anyway, the party mode's SOS mode, but I call it party mode because if you had some music going, you could dance to it. Anyway, so those are the LED lights. Now, the diffused LEDs in these two are definitely going to be more useful. Um, the spotlight in this is just not super useful. I mean, you could use it, but it's just got a really sharp, you know, point right in the middle, and that's where all the light goes. These two, your lights spread out a lot better, so these will light up a room, or if you have these on the table, it'll light up a table so you could play cards or cook dinner or whatever in the dark. You could use these two lights a lot better. Okay, well that's basically all the information I wanted to talk about today. Now it probably seemed like a little bit of overload, but now you know the capacities, the price per watt hour, the weight, the chemistry, the build materials, the outputs, the displays, you know, all that information so you guys can make a good decision on what works best for you. So I'll have the video reviews for each of these batteries in the video description down below. So if you want to check out these uh, individual review videos, you can do that. I'll also have the discount codes and the purchase links below too. So if you're interested in picking one up, that would support the channel. Now I appreciate everyone that supports this channel. Uh, I was actually able to buy this by being portable power station with the money I've earned through uh, my affiliate link. So that allows me to test new power stations and see if it's something that works well. So thank you to everyone that's uh, supported my channel in the past. And now you guys know there's an amazing battery out there that can keep up with these bigger brands. If you guys like this content, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And consider subscribing if this is right down your alley. If you like power stations, solar panels, 12 volt compressor fridges, gadgets for camping, DIY projects, that's what I'm all about. Thanks for watching. We'll go ahead and end the video here. We'll see you guys in the next one.